Hell yeah, brother. You know, this is gonna be day five in the land of free on the break. Goddamn, brother. Right. Okay, so we are gonna be back for another video, this time featuring the most overpowered unit in Hongi Starbucks. So without further ado, let's get into today's content. Subscribe! <laughs> All right, as you guys have seen from my previous video, the most overrated, actually, I don't know what video that would be, the uh, most overrated unit, uh, we are going to be talking about the most overpowered unit in Kongi Starbucks at E0, at E0. Now, there's been a lot, it's going to be Firefly, a lot of people say Firefly, you know, run, May is omnipotent, you know, uh, face Yao, it's kind of crazy. Uh, some people even said, like, what, what was it, some of these, are, uh, I, I think some people said, said Jing, uh, Jing is not too bad. All right. Uh, here's me personally i think the most overpowered unit right now is gonna be e2 silver wolf e2 silver wolf with 20 percent rest now absolutely diabolical and we can in fact build her with a crit silver wolf to deal a obscene amount of damage getting one ton ultimates very very good for overall dps okay genuinely the most overpowered unit in my opinion right now gonna be this mother bitch robin and i will gladly gladly die on this hill all right so first let's just define what is overpowered overpowered is when you have a unit with 4000 hp 3000 defense 5 billion mr true damage one second w cooldown or up airport overpower in honky starbucks is this, in my opinion basically you are performing far 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 better in not just your current team comp with the current environments but also pretty much going into every other team comp that you are you are gonna be placing like if we come to a situation where we are literally gonna be getting a better clear using robin instead of sparkle for hyper carry then there is a bit of a problem right luckily for us robin doesn't really over power run may for super break i think run may is pretty much her for super break and super break alone but every other team comp nowadays i will always ask myself can robin fit into this slot instead of xyz a b c d e f g and pretty much every single time the answer is yes 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 she can in fact fit into almost anything that i can think of performing better if not equal to the unit in question so why is this the case it is basically tied to this ultimate which is in my opinion what makes robin so diabolically overpowered mihoyo knows that this ultimate is crazy good that's why they gave it a 160 energy cost it is the highest energy cost ultimate for any supports in the entire game bar none and she gains energy extremely slowly because you essentially generate energy from quote unquote follow-up attacks when you cast an ultimate. So that is like kind of Mihoyo's ways of like kind of balancing out Robin to make her perform exceptionally well in a follow-up team comp because you can rely on the additional follow-ups to generate energy for your ultimate, snap on a signature like on that kind of stuff. Uh, you can then trigger another ultimate into a triple action value advance and the cycle kind of repeats itself, right? And the power of how absolutely crazy this ultimate is, unfortunately, it has been a couple of months since Robin has released and I think by now, players have realized there is a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of ways that we can make use of Robin's ultimate even outside of follow-up team comps. It has gotten to a situation where players are not thinking about team building anymore. Players are not thinking about, hmm, how do I make my inhibitor team stronger with Sparkle, Team, and Huang Huang? Players are just beginning to get, hmm, how can I make Robin work with this DPS? That is, in my opinion, quite literally the landscape that we are facing as of this current stage. Or at least that's how I feel. It is no longer about making a, making a support, making a sustain to fit this specific DPS or team archetype. It is basically making sure that, yo, I want this Robin ultimate now. How are we going to make it happen? I don't care what it takes. We want to make it happen. And as long as that can happen, this team is complete. 
and it turns out there are a lot, a lot of ways. So example, one of the ways that I've brought up a lot in my previous video is going to be Robin with a Galachat. Galachat. And this specific light cone called Quid Pro Quo. So because Robin's energy cost is so high, chances are you are going to be able to gain this 16 additional energy every single time it's Gallagher's turn to Robin. So you can effectively funnel in all this energy into Robin specifically. This is additionally, you know, even better on Gallagher because Blood does have a action value advance. She has an action value advance of 100% after casting ultimate, which means you can effectively very quickly give Robin a whopping 32, 32 energy just like that. Greatly solving a lot of Robin's energy problems even when she's not in a follow-up team comp, right? So this is one of the methods that players have been trying to use to make Robin viable, optimal even, in team comps outside of follow-up. And another unit that is kind of in the similar situation is also Hue Hue. Right, because when it's ultimate, it is based on your percentage of max energy. So this on Robin is going to be 20% of 160. So it is also an excellent, excellent alternative to make Robin get enough energy and cast ultimate. Not to mention this attack percentage buff also affects Robin. So it kind of has like double benefit as well, right? And another way is also Ting Yun. Yes, you can in fact run Teen Yun's ultimate on Robin. In fact, there's been a lot, a lot of players straight up just using Teen Yun's ultimate on Robin instead of the DPS. So Robin is now your DPS. Robin is now your DPS. You buff up Robin in order to make sure she gets that turn one ultimate. So every single time when your teaming gets her ultimate, you don't give it to your DPS, you give it to Robin instead. So what ends up happening is, even though your DPS doesn't have the energy anymore, now Robin is guaranteed to get her ultimate every single time her turn comes up. Which makes for some very, very diabolical team comps outside of full-up team. You can run this with Inhibitor, you can run this with Signal, you can run this with pretty much any hypercarry you want. Fuck, you can even run this with DOT, sustainers DOT, slap on team, you can give it to Robin, triple action value advance, and you're good to go, right? So it is also an excellent, excellent way to bring up Robin's value. And one last way that I can kind of think of at this moment is going to be with Sparkle. So this is basically, instead of using Sparkle to buff your main DPS, use her to buff Robin. So this is where you can see Sparkle's value. So Robin goes, but you can see Robin doesn't reach the next turn, right? You can see, but once we buff Robin up, Robin does in fact move into the same wave, so we can now gain Robin's extra action just in case we don't get hit enough. Luckily for us, the guy actually does hit Robin enough, so even if we didn't bring Robin up, we could have gotten the energy. So you can see her energy is basically messed up, but I just wanted to be safe, so I gave Robin a buff from Sparkle. So, but this is essentially how the team can work. So on the same note, technically speaking, Bronya can also do the same thing, but you might face some skill point issues, especially if you are not at least at E1. Sparkle is not that bad. Sparkle is not that bad. So if you action value advance Bobbin, after her first action, you do need to have a very specific build to make sure that she can get enough action to go again immediately following Sparkle's skill. Usually, this is 135. Usually, this is 135 with the additional action value. Not just to get her turn fast enough before a team, but also before the enemy team, right? Before the enemy team even hits you, try to get this to be fast enough. So what ends up happening is Sparkle buffing Robin after Robin gets a turn. So Robin can act twice instantly casting our ultimate before we even need any semblance of follow-up damage. This is, I would say, a, a little bit more niche because it's probably not going to be ideal in a long battle scenario because it's usually the most effective in your very, very first turn as well as the very, very second turn, right? Uh, if the battle dress on was super, super long, you might face an issue. But then again, because of the ridiculous amount of damage and utility Robin provides, most battles don't last beyond... 0, 1, or at most like 2 cycles, and you're pretty, the enemy's pretty much dead. Just because of how much additional value you get from a triple 100% action value advance, right? So because there are now so many ways that we can make use to effectively cheat, cheat Robin's ultimate, she is genuinely not a follow-up team comm unit. At this point, she is just the unit. She is the honored one. She is the chosen one. She is the main character. You can quite literally just cheat, 
Slap on the ultimate and pretty much every single team that you can think of can make use of Robin. Fuck, you can even run this on a super break as long as you keep it sustained. So sustain Robin. Fuck it. How many MC run may Robin Firefly slap it on? I guarantee you everything is going to be dead before they even move. It's just that much diabolical damage, right? So, uh, yeah, that is why I believe at her base kit alone, she is the overpower unit. And I don't mean this in like a, you know, she's she's good as she tears, right? I, overpower is she's too much to the point where it is starting to negatively affect the overall team building experience. It's like, I want to use Sparkle, but my Robin is better in hyper carry. I want to use Rame for my DOT. Oh, but my Robin is better for my DOT team call. Oh, I want to use DOT. Oh, but my Robin is better. It's like whenever I want to build, it's like, oh, it's, it's, it always just goes back into Robin again. And that is where it might be a little bit too overtuned because there are too many ways that we can cheat this ultimate. All right. Uh, since day one, I think players didn't discover this. Right? When Robin first came out, we have this agenda, right? She's full up, she's full up, she's full up. So people didn't really explore before enough. Now, a couple of months later, we have unlocked all these techniques. And unless Mihoyo change something about this, um, she is going to be D1. She is D1, right? Light Icon wise, also very good in a sense where you quite literally don't need this Ninja Light Icon because there's a lot of loss. I mean, you can run the Poise to Bloom, excellent, excellent alternative. You have this uh, literal free Light Icon for tomorrow's journey. So all these are excellent stuff. Fuck, you can even run, where is it? Bronya Signature. Technically, it still works even though it only applies for the next action. Right? You got the skill points, not too bad. Please don't run Dun on Robin, by the way. If I see somebody running Dun Zan 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 Robin, uh, I will go to the house and I will, I, I will eat your dog. Uh, so yeah, very, very poggies. And just before we kind of wrap up this video, Robin also has one of the strongest, fuck it, not even one of, she has the strongest Eidolon one across any supports. I know there has been a couple of debates on E1 Rame versus E1 Robin. No, it is not even close. E1 Robin, it's a straight up 24% multiplier boom slap it in done defense ignore is good it's good if you can stack it on so unless you're somebody that's thinking of putting for e1 Dingsha and praying to god in the future we have some sort of harmony troll that can also have defense down the value for defense down it will never match up to just straight up a 24 percent rest pen this e1 also is what makes robin so flexible and so versatile you can literally run her in any of who the fuck cares about silver wolf implanting one weakness wow well, look at look at me i implant one weakness with 20 percent res down that's so crazy that's so crazy that's so crazy oh wait i can just do this for my entire team for any element at any given point of time for my entire team permanently as long as i have her ultimate the fuck so like <laughs> it legitimately just fixes a lot of this kind of like off elemental problems, which further drives on the point of why Silver Wolf and her whole mechanic is just overrated at this point, right? So, uh, very, very, very diabolical either one, I would say. Very, very valuable. And if you guys are thinking of, you know, what is one island I could consider to raise up my current team? Uh, the answer is Robin. It is not E1 Akron. It's not E1 Facial. It's not E1. It is E1 Robin. It is E1 Robin. And because she can be slot into so many different goddamn teams, this E1 is going to be with you for like pretty much where you go. Whenever you go, wherever you are, wherever you'll be, you're always going to be listening to welcome into my world. Alright, so yeah, that is pretty much it as to why I believe Robin is the most overpowered unit in Hongi Starbucks. And they are going to have to do quite a lot to come up with another harmony unit to overthrow Robin. I have no idea what the fuck Sunday is gonna do. I don't know what, like, you know, theoretically speaking, right, Sunday, I don't know, whatever, if, if team revives, all that kind of stuff, I have no idea what they're gonna do, but they're gonna have a lot to catch up on to try to compete with uh, Robin Bobbin over here, right? So, uh, what of the day is gonna be Bird. Join Discord, join Twitch, join YouTube. All the best for the pleasure, fools. And I'll see you guys next time. Okay.